I think that we owe a great debt of gratitude to those women who did lobby very strongly, who went out of their comfort zone a hundred years ago to get the vote for women. And um, I, I would hope that I would be one of those women. I would like to think that I would have had a strong enough opinion that I would have been out there saying women should be able to vote. Um, but I think it's because of their work and their many years of lobbying that we have got today what we've got. We've got women in local government, we have women in parliament. Um, not enough, but certainly more, uh, more each, each decade. My family came out from Liverpool in England when I was nine and uh, there was my sister and my mum and dad. My dad um, had a great sense of humour but he also was a very intelligent man and he had strong opinions. So that usually meant around the dinner table um, he, he'd have some um, discussions about whether it was politics or religion or whatever it was. And uh, my sister and I used to have to butt in every now and again too. So it kind of got you engaged with talking about um, things that are happening in the world, you know, we weren't afraid to talk out. Um, so I guess from my mother I learned the love of music and the love of the spoken word, um, and from my dad I learned the love of musical instruments, but again it was, um, it was mum's singing that, uh, you know, I still remember her voice um, many years later, and when we went back to England not so long ago, people still remember my mother's voice. Um, I actually met my husband Ian through a band. Um, I sang in a band and my sister sang in a different band um, and Ian was the bass guitarist so we met in the band and uh, um, we married and now I still do sing. I'm quite proud that I've been given the opportunity to um, be part of a decision-making state. Um, you know, being a councillor and, and being a commissioner and being a member of parliament um, and bringing the rural uh, voice into, into the parliament of Victoria. I was asked to become a councillor uh, firstly and uh, thought I would do it because uh, I was told by uh, a lady who was the, the only um, female councillor on three councils that were around uh, our area that she was retiring at the next uh, council election and they needed to be somebody to put their hand up. After council amalgamations, um, the councillors were dismissed and I just thought that I'd go back into our business. So I, had, um, I was quite comfortable doing that. I had a phone call from a government minister who asked me to put my hand up as a, as a, a commissioner. And I actually said to him, no, um, I don't know what a commissioner does. And he said, well, Jeanette, we have 500 applications from males who also don't know what commissioners do, but they put their hand up. Um, so they did need females, and uh, the fact that I was a woman but had also business experience and had been a shy president, um, they, had th they needed those skills. Um, I was chosen as the candidate for North Eastern Province. Then we went to a state election, and um, I won the seat, which was which was which was fantastic. And I did that for six and a half years and then the seat of Shepparton became vacant because the member for Shepparton wasn't contesting the seat and asked me would I stand for the seat of Shepparton, which actually meant a move from the upper house to the lower house, which is sometimes quite dangerous because you don't always make that transition. You can sometimes lose, you lose your position. If you're a leader in, in rural and regional Victoria, it's, it's a bit different to being a, a leader in metropolitan. Uh, Melbourne or the surrounds. Uh, in the country their members of parliament and their leaders are really not put on pedestals, they're actually, they understand that we're part of the community and I think as a female member of parliament um, I'm much more approachable to some people because I am a female and I don't seem to be um, intimidating to people. I guess the, the only time I've ever queried the fact that I was a female leader was in the 1993 floods when the Shire was just about 80% of the Shire was inundated with water and I wondered what I should be doing. Should I be out sandbagging? Should I be um, pulling sheep out of dams and out of water? But I think for that brief moment you start to, to query about whether being a female leader uh, you had all of the skills that was needed 
but obviously we have different skills and we're able to put those skills into play very quickly and to talk to people on the ground and to know exactly what this, this, the, uh, the issues were with families and, uh, and making sure that uh, people had a place to stay, people had food to eat and that they were not scared. I think um, in all aspects um, of, of my journey, people ask me what am I most proud of? And I think I'm most proud of my, um, my being a mum to two wonderful sons. And uh, they're both very highly motivated. They've both got great careers. And I've been uh, a public servant, if you like, uh, as a councillor and a member of parliament for a very long time, uh, ever since I was growing up. And one of the proudest moments for me was when a journalist said to my youngest son, who was probably about 13 at the time, what is it like having a, a powerful mother? And, uh, and Nathan just said, I don't know, she's just my mum.